to start with prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us together one more day, Lord, to share in your word and to sit at your feet and have you teach us. Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will touch those that are not with us in this moment, wherever they may be at home, our brothers and sisters, new friends and guests. Father, touch each and every one of us. Please hide us in your shadows so that you may come forth and your spirit will lead us in the direction you want us to go. Father, we praise you and we thank you for this Sabbath day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome those of you that are joining us today. And uh, I'm Mike and this is Tim. Morning. And uh, Tim, what are, we, what are we studying today? Today we are in... The Sabbath, the Sabbath School Quarterly, How to Interpret Scripture, and we're in lesson number three, and that is, it is writ, or Jesus and the Apostles, the view of the Bible. So this is Jesus' view of the Bible. And the Apostles. And the Apostles. Okay. All right. So the, today's memory text starts out uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, what do you think of that, Tim? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting how he says that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, when I read this, it says, It is written. And I thought, hmm, it so is where written. is it written? So I did a little bit of looking here, and I found where it is written. This is just another, another reason that we know that Jesus learned his scriptural knowledge from the Old Testament. Uh, found in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Uh, Old Testament, beginning of it there, it says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, mm. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Nice. So even right there, Jesus was referring to Old Testament scripture, mm -hmm. and he used Old Testament scripture to rebuke the devil. That's right. When tempted by appetite, Jesus responds, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus points back to the living word as the ultimate divine source. In this way, he affirms the authority of Scripture when tempted with the world's kingdom and glory. Jesus responds, It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And that's out of Matthew 4.10. And if we look at Matthew 4.10, it goes on to say, Then Jesus said to him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. Again, <clears throat> it says, It is written. So I did a little bit of looking. Where is it written? Well, it's actually written in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Deuteronomy chapter 10, and Joshua chapter 24. So I'll read those. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Deuteronomy 10, 12 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, thou shalt thou serve, and to him only shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. In other words, he is the ultimate authority. Joshua verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 14, again, all Old Testament here. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served in the other side of the flood. Amen. Which your, which your fathers served before the flood mm -hmm. and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Talking about the prophets. Yep. So, you know, another thing too with this, you know, Christ reminds us that true worship is focused on God and not anyone else. And the, and 
the submission to his word is true worship. So I found that very interesting. So when we submit to God's word, the whole word, then we are worshiping God. And I think that's, that, that's a wonderful thing that a lot of people don't even understand. What they're doing when they study God's word and they use the whole context of what's in this book, they're you worshiping mean, God. You mean I'm not just supposed to pick a verse here or pick a verse there? Probably. Massage it to make it work for me? You know, we know that the world is like that, and that's not how we're supposed to do it. That is where men's philosophy and, and men's ideas come in, and, and we're flawed. We can't, we, God is trying to tell us that's not how you're supposed to do it. My word, my word. And Jesus here is trying to show us how he looked at God's word. He, he preached God's word. It is written, it is written. He never imposed his philosophy on there. He never allowed the apostles. When the apostles tried to go down that route, he would stop them right then. And, and then he would go right back to the word. So... No, we're not supposed to do that. It is written. It what, is if it, written. what if in our daily conversation with people, if we knew our Bibles well enough, that we could say, it is written. Well, we're supp- we, that's what God's, God's hope for that's, us is. That's what he, he hopes for us. Yeah. That's right. We're to write every word on our hearts because, brothers and sisters, there's going to be a day. Even the Bible says so. It is written. That there's going to be a day where we're going to be in the courts and we're going to have to testify for our faith in Christ. For God said, for my name, you will be persecuted. Well, I don't think we're even going to have to go to go to court to even be questioned. No. You know, when we talk, when our bosses come to us or when fellow co-workers come to us, you know, how come you keep the Sabbath? How come you do this? Right. How come you, you do that? Right. You know, we're in, in a way that's the begin, beginning of being tested for our, our faith in a very simple way among friends and colleagues. That's right. And if we don't have the right answers for them, we need to do like what Jesus did and, and study, study the scriptures and know them well enough that we can, act, we can say, well, this is what the Bible says mm-hmm. and answer those questions with, a, with, with biblical scripture um, because that's, uh, there's really no argument that could be made Exactly. Getting your answers from biblical scripture. And, just, and that's, that's why Jesus did it. One thing we do know that the Bible tells us again is that um, there's going to be, even now we've already seen this, where they've taken scripture and they twist scripture back on to us. And this reminds me of the temptation in the desert. We have an instance where we have the, Satan quoting scripture to Jesus and right here it says in these temptations Jesus responds with the words it is written that is Jesus goes right to the word of God and nothing else to deal with the attacks and deceptions of Satan this should be a powerful lesson to all of us the Bible and the Bible alone is the ultimate standard and foundation of our belief yes Satan used uh uh, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, he, he did use part of the Bible, and uh, he, he kind of twisted the meaning of it. He says, and he said to him, if thou be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And then Jesus comes back and says to him, it is written again, thou <laughs> shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's right. That's right. And we're not supposed to tempt God either. No, no. You know, what would tempting God be? Speeding? Not keeping his commandments? Not, not, not eating healthy? Sure. I mean, think of it in daily life. You know, we get up in the morning and we, we pray and we ask God to take care of us. Mm-hmm. And ask God to keep us healthy, but boy, that Dairy Queen, that sure says, sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> or, or, you know, uh, <laughs> anything else that we put into our, our mouth that could physically harm our bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sure. 
Sure. So. You know, they, it, to, it's, I've, I've, I've been in situations many, many times, and I know you have, and I know a lot of you at home have, that when we're doing our witnessing, somebody will come back because of the doctrine that, that they're steeped in, you know, out of respect. Got to love them, and we do. Um, I used to be a Baptist, and I was surrounded in the doctrine, but it didn't make sense to me. So when I came into this truth, and God, God's Holy Spirit led me into this truth, and he also gave me understanding. So it wasn't until I actually received the truth and was open to it that the Holy Spirit started working that he gave me the understanding to understand that, okay, this is why I'm here, and this is what I'm doing from here on out, and that's understanding his whole word. When you, st when you ask God to show you what the truth was, that's when you were able to start to, tr start to understand and the Holy sure. Spirit was opening things up to you because Amen. you were willing to learn. Yes, yes, and that's, it's wonderful. And that's not just with me. That's, that, that, that is something that is available for anybody who is seeking, anybody who's got questions, anybody that just wants to know the truth. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, are we ready to go on to Monday? Sure. All right. So Monday is entitled Jesus and the Law, and uh, Matthew 5, verses 17 through 20, and Matthew 22, 29, and Matthew 23, 2, and 3. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about here for just a little bit. And uh, I just kind of gave it a little quick summary, and then we'll go back and we'll talk about this, what, how I came up with this. Um, what is Jesus saying in these, in these texts? And what I came up with was that the law will stand forever. If we know the scriptures, we will know the will of God. And the scribes and Pharisees were judges and leaders like Moses did or was. That's what they were to, to, to be. Mm -hmm. They were to be judges. People would bring their problems to Moses and Moses would listen and he'd you know, give them some godly ad advice. Mm -hmm. However, the scribes and the Pharisees became very uh, self-absorbed and they didn't follow their own advice. Correct. So uh, let's start out with uh, Matthew five seventeen through 20. Do, do you have that there, Tim? I do. All right, Matthew 5. 17 through 20. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever shall teach and do them shall be considered great in the kingdom of heaven for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven okay so let's go back to verse 17 think not that i am come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, a lot of people use that statement for the idea that God abolished the Ten Commandments or right. Jesus abolished the Ten Commandments. That's right. However, Paul didn't see it that way. Right. Because in Romans chapter 10, verse 4, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Mm -hmm. Now, what law would... Paul be talking about see there was a law of death when Adam and Eve sinned mm -hmm. the law of death came into effect right they were gone but Jesus and God gave them a way out Jesus the, the father and the son had a plan mm -hmm. and the way out of that death plan was that when they sinned, they would have to kill a lamb, have a sacrifice, and confess their sins, and ask God to forgive them of their sins. Right. 
And can you imagine killing a lamb? A lamb that's done nothing to you? Yep. And the lamb represented Jesus. That's right. So there was this law of death. And that law was in in was there until Jesus died on the cross and rose. Right. We get into this idea sometimes that, well, it was all done at the cross. It really wasn't. Had Jesus not risen from the dead, Satan would have won. Right. Because that would have meant that God would have rejected the sacrifice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So really where Jesus won the battle was the fact that God sends his archangel, Michael, down, rolls away the stone and says, Jesus, your father's waiting for you. Come on out. That was when the sacrificial system, that was the end of it. That's right. There was no need for it. And That's that right. is why at the death of Jesus on the cross, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom mm. because that curtain in the sanctuary represented Jesus' body right. in the sanctuary service. Jesus' body was torn for us. The Bible says that. It was, he, was, he, was, he was torn. So on this verse 17, when he, he says, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come to fulfill. He was coming to fulfill something that they were looking forward to mm -hmm. since the Garden of Eden and when they fell in the Garden of Eden. That's right. So the prophets used to prophesy the coming of Jesus, that the Messiah is to come. They had been teaching that and preaching that. But were they happy when they saw him show up? Why not? Because they were right. God, they were proven right. They wanted, they wanted Jesus to, to uh, clean house on the Romans. That's not they what wanted was him. Happening. They were looking for him to set up an earthly kingdom. That's right. So they weren't willing to accept him. And we're kind of getting off the lesson here, but we got. Let's take this a step farther while we're while we're we're here. If you have the Jewish nation today who still hasn't, for the most part, accepted Jesus as the Son of God, they are set up mm. for Satan to come back and say, "I have come, I have come to save you." And we're told that he's going to perform miracles and he's going to do all these things. And Jesus says, don't be deceived. That's right. Don't be deceived because I am the Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's, it's interesting. There's going to be a real deception one day yet. How even as we've come so far in today's times that... Still, when you look back at how the teachings were going on when Jesus was here, even when he walked in and he was talking with the scribes and Pharisees, and the scribes and Pharisees were questioning him, and you say that you're the Christ, and you say you're a king? Well, we still don't only see a little bit of that still today. That sentiment still has carried on through all of these generations, and this is what we see today. And this is why it's so important to understand and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in God's word because he is going to give you that true understanding and know how to discern, well, that's not right. This is right. Thus saith the Lord. Okay, and then verse 18. Read verse 18 for us again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass, from the law till all be fulfilled. Okay, now I could twist that a little bit, couldn't I? Sure, absolutely. But if I look at some other statements that Jesus made in the Bible, Matthew 24, verse 35. Matthew 24, verse 35 says, and this is Jesus speaking, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Now, where did Moses come up with the Ten Commandments? They were written on tables of stone. They were written by God's hands. Yep. 
Why would they be written in stone? Because they will last forever. When Jesus knelt down, when they brought Mary to him, and Jesus knelt down and he starts writing the sins of her accusers, did he write them in stone or in, in the dirt, in the sand? In the sand. He wrote them in the sand. After they walked away, what did he do? He, he erased it. Okay. That's a symbol that even our, our worst sins, God can forgive. That's right. You know, that, but God's word doesn't go away. That's right. Because it's written in stone. And then Luke 7, Luke, Luke chapter 16, verse 17 says, and this is one that is almost never referred to if someone is trying to argue with you that the law was done away with, it says, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Hmm. Meaning it's, as far as I know, heaven and earth are still here. That's right. That's right. Verse 19, let's kind of break that down a little bit. What else did Jesus say here? Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach them teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I, You know, with this verse here, when I've talked to other brothers and sisters about this, um, and this, this, this verse is brought up, you can see where this can get twisted around very easily. You know, so... Well, what did we read earlier, though? We read that we're supposed to read all the Bible. That's right. But you have a lot of people that think that just in this verse alone, that it's okay not to... Keep, you can break one commandment. You're still going to go to heaven. No. It's just that you're going to be considered least in heaven. But that's not what it means. It means that if you break one of these commandments, you are transgressing the law of God, and you are guilty of the, of the reward of death. That's what that's what happens here. When you when you keep least one of these commandments, you're keeping you're breaking one of God's laws, and that's transgression, and the reward is death. So you won't be in heaven. But if you teach these commandments, or if you teach this, you will be considered great in heaven, meaning that you have have faith in Jesus, you have faith in God's word, you trust God's word is telling you the truth, because God is god of truth but then you become sanctified and the holy spirit will lead you that close that much closer to god james 2 verse 10 oh, yeah james 2 verse 10 this backs up what you just said for whosoever shall keep the whole law but offends in one point he's guilty of all right now you know I've got some really good friends that don't keep Sabbath and they read their Bibles mm -hmm. and they study absolutely and they, they believe what the Bible says but there's a few verses that they hang their faith on. Mm -hmm. They read, they believe, but they're afraid to do. Correct. And they're afraid to do because of peer pressure. They're afraid to do because they might be made fun of. Mm. I know one gentleman, he's afraid to do because his religion is the same religion that his parents' religion was and his grandparents' religion mm -hmm. was, and it would be a disgrace to the family name mm -hmm. to say my mom and dad or my grandparents made a mistake. But this is so clear, right? You know, and if we're not, if we're not keeping the whole law, we're guilty of breaking them all. That's right. Yes. You know, with God, it's all or nothing. And you know, I have a, I've, I've been in discussions where they say, well, it's just a little sin. 
according to the Ten Commandments, every single one of those commandments is equal. There's not one sin greater than the other, or you're, God's not, if you, if the, one, the same sin is the same sin. You break it, you break it. Well, and the Bible even talks about that, is that that can also come from just ignorance. Sure. Not knowing, and that's actually a reference in the next verse, verse, verse 20. What do you got there? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, Paul understood that well. Mm -hmm. Because Paul had been a Pharisee. Right. We, it's, it's easy to forget that. Mm -hmm. Paul had been a Pharisee. And when God got a hold of him, then Paul realized that he was on the wrong road, you sure. might so to speak. And that, and that he was being led down, the, down the, the wide, easy path of destruction. That's right. And in Romans 10, verse 3, Paul says... And here again, Paul had a lot of grit mm -hmm. because here he is even saying that he made a mistake. He says, for they, he what? He had been one of, of them. Right. And he was talking about the Pharisees, the scribes and Pharisees. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own, own righteousness. righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That's right. To put themselves, exalting themselves above God. They wanted salvation their way. That's right. Do we want salvation our way? No. We're not supposed we, to. We're not supposed to. But, you know, sometimes I think we... We go along in life. I know I do. I go along mm. in life. It's real easy for me to say, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't look at that. Maybe I shouldn't eat that. Maybe I shouldn't. But, you know, it'll be okay just, yeah. just this one time, just a little bit. You know, a good example of that is once saved, always saved. Yeah. You know, it was... It's okay that, that God had, or Jesus took the law and he pinned it to the cross. So we're no longer under the Ten Commandments law. Well, I've said this before. I'll say it again. How many of us get married, tell our, our husband or wife, our loved one that, yeah, we love you or I love you. And if it ever changes, I'll let you know. Once married, always married. How long would your marriage last if that's the way that you treated your sure. your beloved or your children? That's right. How long would your kids care about you or want to be around you or see you? Mm -hmm. If you if when they were born you gave them a hug and you said, I love you, and if it ever changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> There's no substance in that. It has to be daily. That's right. It has to be daily. We have to reassure each other daily that we care the same as we need to reassure God that, oh Lord, I need you in my life. Right. I need you here every day. All right, well, we're uh, kind of burning up the clock here, but we're uh, going a little deeper here than probably what was intended on the lesson. I'm sure we're not gonna make it all the way through this, so we just may have to have a part two. Yeah. Uh, there's another question here on Jesus and the law on Monday's lesson. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Again, the first book of the New Testament. Twenty-two, Matthew 22, 37. 37. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will re reverence my son, to what? 40. But when the husbandmen saw that the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize his inheritance. Where are you at? 
Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 37. Yeah. Well, uh, that was 38. Going through 40. Okay. Okay. So that was 38. So verse 39. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Verse 40. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandsmen? I'm sorry, I was in the wrong place. Oh. I caught up with you. <laughs> All right. So Matthew 22, 37. On 37, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. There's some other Bible texts on that too, and they're all the way back in Deuteronomy. Boy, that pesky Old Testament. <laughs> Why can't we just get rid of it? Some have. There's this, there's this, all the references that, in my Bible here, it says, uh, it's in the red letters. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was the one that was speaking, speaking this. Yep. So there again, here's Jesus quoting the Old Testament, That's right. that pesky Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. What is your might? Your strength, your... Your will, your, your grit, friend. your moxie, your, mm -hmm. <laughs> your soul... Everything that you have. Everything that you have. And then here's another one for it. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That's right. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Now, when I read that, I thought to myself, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart what in the world does that mean? Well, circumcision is a sign of getting rid of self-pleasure. Right. That's what that is. Our heart can't think, mm -hmm. but our heart has feeling. Right. I know. The first time I had a girlfriend and she broke up with me, it broke my heart. You could have put <laughs> a knife in my chest and it hurt. It physically mm -hmm. hurt. But my heart had no reasoning. My heart had no doubt. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to love God without doubt. That's correct. Without Uncondition. Unconditional. We're not supposed to think about it and slice it and dice it of how we love God. We're supposed to just plain love God. And if we disappoint God or we do something that we know that isn't, isn't right, it should hurt. That's right. It should physically hurt yes. our hearts because we would know that we have disappointed God. That's loving God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. One of the statements here in the quarterly for for that that Bible ver those Bible verses in this statement to the lawyer Jesus summarizes the 10 commandments given to Moses nearly 1500 years earlier. It should be recognized how Jesus focused on the Old Testament law and elevates it to the highest level. Many Christians incorrectly have concluded that here are new commandments, here are a new commandment is given. And thus somehow the Old Testament law is now replaced by the New Testament gospel. But the fact is, is that what Jesus is teaching is based on the Old Testament law. Christ had unveiled and revealed the law more fully. So what on these two commandments summarizing the Ten Commandments, the first four of which focus on the human divine relationship, and the second six of which to focus on the human inter, inter, interpersonal relationships, depend on all the law and the prophets. Yeah. In verse 38, it says, this is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord the God with all thine heart. Mm -hmm. 
That's the first of the first four. First four. The next three in law order mm -hmm. has to do completely 100% with God. That's right. If you love, if you love God, you're going to keep his Sabbath. If you love God, you're not going to have any gods before him. Mm -hmm. If you love God, you're, the, next, the next three are going to fall in line. Then on the other side of the page, we have the next six. That's right. And that's why Jesus said, the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, why did he say that the second is like unto it? You can't love your neighbor the same as you love God, or, or can you? Sure. We're supposed to love our neighbor unconditional. That's right. That's right. To put love God. So, so that's why Jesus said the second is like unto it, and it's it's also the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of the ones about man. That's right. So he didn't give us a new set of commandments. No. He just said these are the laws of about God, and these are the laws of how you need to treat your fellow man. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I have these discussions, they, they and, and um, I get the comment that, well, my pastor, I asked my pastor about what you had said, talking about <laughs> pinning the law to the cross, and they would always come back and say that my pastor explained it to me this way. And then I have to come back to him, and I'll say, yes, but your pastor says that you're under grace, and we're no longer under the law. Yes, we are under grace until we break the Ten Commandments, and then we're back under the law again. And so they, they, it, it's hard for them to understand that. You know, this analogy is used a lot. If I'm going down a freeway and the speed limit is 60 That's miles an use. hour, as long as I'm <laughs> underneath that 60 miles an hour, the law has no effect on me. Because mm -hmm. you're under grace. But the minute I drive 61 miles an hour, I have to watch my speedometer because I'm thinking to myself, I hope there's not an officer out here that's going to pull me over for doing 61. Mm -hmm. I don't think there will be. I don't think I'll get pulled over until I hit 66. That's right. Because they'll give me a, a, a five-mile-an-hour a five grace period. Yeah. You know, if I'm driving down the road and I know I'm doing the speed limit, I always tell myself, oh, you're under grace. <laughs> as soon as I get, I look up, I'm like, how did I get to 65? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm out of harmony now. Bring it back down. That's right. So, uh, let's see, where were we here? Verse, um, we talked about verse 39. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about verse 40. Um, I, do have, I do have a couple of references here, references that I've marked and uh, located on, chap on uh, verse 40 there, chapter 22, verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I uh, got three of them here, and these are all from the New Testament now. Uh, Matthew 7, verse 12. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Mm. That was Jesus who was speaking there, and he was referring back again to the law. And remember what we read earlier? Mm -hmm. If you broke one, you broke them all. That's right. So was Jesus acknowledging right there that the Ten Commandments are still hold true? Absolutely. Yes. Because if you break one, you break them all. So then, but Jesus was referring back to them and saying, for this is the law and the, and the prophets. This is how you need to treat your fellow man. This is what you were taught mm -hmm. centuries back. That's right. And then Paul in Romans 13, 10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. But I thought Jesus fulfilled the, the, the law. Well, he did, but there was two laws. That's right. There was two laws. The Mosaic there was the law. Mo there's the law of death, and there's God's law that shows God's character. Okay. The Ten Commandments yeah. shows God's character is really what it is. So Romans 13, 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, I think Paul would have known that very well if that had been, if the law had been abolished. Why would, why would Paul be referring back to the law? Right, right. That makes no sense. 
you know, and then we have one more, 1 Timothy 1, 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. So the last commandment is charity out of what? A pure heart. Pure heart. That's right. Love your neighbor as yourself. Unconditionally. The Lord's Prayer says what? Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. How? As we forgive those, those who have sinned, who against, sinned us. against us. God loved me the same way that I love my neighbor. Mm -hmm. God's going to love us the same way. Amen. Well, he loves us unconditionally, but, but you can't... God cannot live where there's sin. That's right. Sin and God cannot coexist. And if we have a sinful trait in our life, He can't be there. We're not. We can't be in, in God's presence. That's right. And if we can't love our neighbor as as we as our, ourselves, treat our neighbors with dignity and res respect, mm -hmm. how can how can God allow us to be in His presence? That's right. You have something. Yep. So these are words from a modern day prophet. Sister White, and she says, um, in, in its human wisdom, the world cannot know God. Its wise men gather an imperfect knowledge of God from his created works, and then their foolishness, they exalt nature and his laws of nature above nature's God. Those who have not a knowledge of God through an acceptance of the revelation he has made of himself in Christ will obtain only an imperfect knowledge of him in nature. And his, this knowledge, so far from bringing the whole being into conformity to his will, will make men idolaters. Professing themselves to be wise, they will become fools. And this goes back, I think, to what, how the condition of the Pharisees were. They thought that their laws were the right laws. They thought that their ways were the right ways. But it took Jesus to come and question them and make them think. And all that did was infuriate them because it was their own selfish pride that wasn't allowing them to come in conformity to God's will. They weren't looking for truth, were they? No, they were not looking for truth. They had preconceived ideas. And we can have the same preconceived ideas today. That's right. You know, we can have preconceived ideas just as simple as, well, I was baptized. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything more. You know, That's right. I was saved on May 16, 1984. Well, I was, I was married 28 years ago. Does that mean I still love my wife? The only way I can still love my wife is if I continue to communicate with her. And tell her every day, I love her. And you. I have to tell her every day, hey, I'm, I'm glad to be married to you. It's, and it, God is no different. I mean, God is our creator. That's right. God wants that daily relationship. He doesn't want us to take little bits and pieces out of the Bible here and there like the Pharisees did and come up with their own religion. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why Jesus said all the way through, all the way through his ministry here on this earth for three and a half years, he says, as it is written. That's right. As it is written, constantly. It was as it is written. Where was it written? It had all been written in the Old Testament. Yep. You know, one of the things that reminds me of the Pharisees that, you know, God created the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It was very simple. It's not something that was complicated, but there was an instance where the Pharisees had taken the Sabbath and they came up with all of these different laws. You couldn't walk a certain feet. You couldn't, you couldn't spit. You couldn't do this or you couldn't do that. And Jesus, it took Jesus you, to come along. You, you couldn't even carry a hanky, so you had to have it pinned onto your shirt right. before Sabbath came. That's right. 
Because if you pinned it onto your shirt, that was working. That's right. They made it so complicated that it became impossible to keep the Sabbath because you were always questioning, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Am I keeping this holy? But Jesus came along and said, pretty much it is written, <laughs> seven days you shall labor, this is on the six sixth days. days. Mm -hmm. You know, all he did was quote Exodus, yep. the Old Testament, and then he and 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 highlighted Deuteronomy. Yep. So it's it's our foolishness that gets us in the way of God working in our lives. And if we would just conform and do it the way Jesus is showing us here, how he taught the apostles to be firmly grounded in the word. And it is written. That's right. Then, you know what? I think that we, because he has showed us the example, we do have hope. And there is a chance that one day we will be alongside of him in heaven. Well, that's why Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Every day. Die to self Jesus every day. Jesus took up his, his cross. He says, if you want a part of me, he says, you're going to you're gonna have to go through what I went through. Oh, look You're at Nicodemus. What, I did. what do I have to do to be saved? And he, Jesus told him, you know. So it, that right there, it needs to be our experience. Yeah. So heart. That's right. He wants our our heart. Well, I think we're about out of time. So, I think so. Uh, let's have have prayer. Father, we thank you again for another Sabbath day. We thank you for the many blessings you give us all week long as we're. Uh, out dealing with uh, people and and talking with people we pray that uh, they might see you through us and that they will want to know what we have what makes us different and if that's not the case we ask that you'll stir us up light a fire underneath us and uh, that we will get into your word and that we will have something to share with those around us we thank you we ask you to go with us and stay with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.